My name is Jeff Harden. I'm an American Rabbit Breeders Association licensed all breed rabbit judge. I've been a judge since 1982. I've been breeding rabbits since 1969. And during those 51 years, I raised approximately 30 of the recognized 50 breeds in the American Rabbit Breeders Association. In 1982, I began breeding what is one of my favorite breeds of rabbits, the Belgian Hare. The animal I have here is an example of a Belgian Hare. When you pose a Belgian Hare, many people have difficulty. There's all types of uh, theories and practices and people will tell you all type of different methods of posing a Belgian Hare. But really, Belgian hair posing is not difficult. Number one, uh, good posing is bred into the animals. And you want an animal that likes to pose on its own with minimal effort. What you're looking for in a Belgian hair, traits of a very good Belgian hair, is number one, you want a very elegant looking rabbit. You want a, a rabbit that has length of body. You want a rabbit that has very good length of front limb. When the animal is posed up, you want that animal to have very nice, long, straight front legs, and you want to see the animal standing up on its tiptoes. A common fault you see in the Belgian hare is animals who have extremely weak ankles, and when you pose them up, they can't stand on their tiptoes. The ankle is at a bend. It's almost like a flipper. And when you look at these animals, you also see that the toes are elongated on these animals. Uh, I judge a number of shows in Europe. And they have a, a term that they use in the Belgian hair standard over there, uh, cat's and tricked, which basically means cat paws. When you look at a Belgian hair, you want that Belgian hair to have very small, minimal toes so it can stand up on its tiptoes. A lot of people will talk about, oh, you put your hands underneath their chin. Uh, some people you'll see, they'll grab the ears and hold them up like this. All those methods are improper if you really know how to handle a Belgian hare. To set a Belgian hare up, you simply put your hand underneath its chest. You can do this whether you're right-handed or left-handed. You lift the animal up. You can position the feet so that the feet are straight and back. You lift it up, and then the animal will want to sit up on the toes. Sometimes you may need to simply rub the ears there slightly to get its attention. The other thing with Belgian hares is they respond to sound. So a nice something like that will get their attention. And they stand up. And you can see a nice, very elegant rabbit. And again, when you're looking at these animals, it's almost like looking at a, a bent tube. You want an animal that starts out here at the shoulders, goes very nicely, rounds across the top of the hindquarters, goes down to a very full hindquarter, you also want an animal that's extremely smooth. You know, there was a, a fallacy for many years that the, the Belgian hare, because of its shape of body, would always be very rough in the hindquarters. That's not true. You want an animal, just like any other breed of animal, that has very nice firm flesh, very smooth, very smooth hindquarters, and when you ran, run your hand over it, you feel nice firm flesh and a smooth animal. I could have brought a bunch of animals that are in coat completely. But I brought this animal because I wanted you to be able to see the difference that the Belgian hair color goes through when the animal is molting. You'll notice here, you can see a line that separates two colors on this animal. The top of this animal has a very new coat. This is gonna be a very prime coated animal when this finishes on down the sides. And you notice it's a nice darker color than where the molt is. When they start molting, they get a little lighter. The new coat coming in is a very rich rufous red. And that's one of the factors on the Belgian hair. You want nice, rich rufous red color on the rufous variety of the Belgian hair. In Belgian hairs, uh, the ARBA recognizes two varieties. And if you're gonna breed Belgian hairs, show Belgian hairs, I would recommend you being familiar with the Belgian hair standard. The American Rabbit Breeders puts out, and this is a brand new standard this year, a standard of perfection that lists all the various breeds of rabbits that are recognized. There's 50 of them. In the 
ARBA, and you'll see the Belgian hair standard is in here. If you get this Belgian hair standard, you will be able to know word for word what you're looking for for this rabbit. So there's two varieties. This is the Rufus variety. Again, it's got a very rich Rufus red color. It's got black ticking up over the top of that. And if you take the animal's fur like this, you blow into it, you'll see a very slate blue base. You'll see an, a Rufus red intermediate color. And then up on the top is the black ticking. It's also recognized in tan variety. In the tan variety, all four colors, black, blue, chocolate, and lilac, are recognized. The tan variety of the Belgian hair is very similar to the tan breed uh, in terms of markings, eye circles, triangles, um, chest markings, everything that you would see in that breed. In terms of disqualifications, this breed has a minimal number of disqualifications. Again, when you get the book, it lists those disqualifications for you. So for this breed, the first disqualification, of course, deals with the weight, overweight or underweight. When you look at the senior weight for bucks and does, it has a top weight of nine and a half pounds. It has a minimum weight of six pounds. So if you have a senior buck or a senior doe, if the animal is below six or over nine and a half, that's a disqualification. There is no top weight on the juniors, bucks or does. However, there is a minimum weight. If you have a junior buck or doe and it weighs less than three pounds, then that's a disqualification. The next disqualification for the breed, if you look at the breed standard, comes under the Rufus variety. And the disqualification there, of course, has to deal with the eye color. In the Rufus variety, it has to have a brown eye. Any other color of eye in the Rufus is a disqualification. The other disqualification in the Rufus is the lack of this black ticking. No black ticking, then the animal basically becomes a solid Rufus red, non-banded hair shaft, and that's a disqualification. And that is all the disqualifications for the breed. So as I said, this breed has very few, compared to other breeds, disqualifications. In terms of maintaining these rabbits, um, they are a little unique in terms of how they must be maintained. These animals thrive best when they're on solid floor cages. Those solid floors can be made out of wood. They can be consistent of a polyurethane tray. They can be metal trays. Whatever you make the, the bottom solid floor out of, you then provide the appropriate bedding on top of it. Recommendation is that the first layer be a nice uh, white pine shaving, two or three inches deep on top of the white pine shavings that's covered with a nice quality of straw. And if you do that, these animals have a very nice uh, bedding this is protection of their feet. It also produces an animal that has optimal flesh condition when they're able to have solid floors to live on. In terms of size, Belgian hair cages, approximately 18 inches in height. A 36 length cage by 24 wide is a nice roomy cage for a single rabbit. Uh, if you want to breed rabbits, then of course you would want to put a doe in a, a little bit longer cage or possibly a, even also a wider cage so that she and her babies can have room to, to mature out. Feed, um, a nice quality of pellet, half cup, three quarters cup, depending on the type of pellet you use, type of protein. I personally use a 17% protein pellet. I use an extruded rabbit pellet, which is only made by uh, Kent and Blue Seal. It's called Show Hutch Deluxe 17. The extruded pellet allows more nutrition to enter the rabbit system. I like it personally, but there's a lot of quality feeds. My suggestion is find a feed that works well for your animals and feed it. The other essential thing with this breed is a high quality of hay. Personally, I, I believe that Timothy hay, orchard grass hay, or a mix of those two are the best for this particular breed. Feed them all they can eat, all they can clean up in a 24 hour period. Uh, if you feed a nice quality pellet, a good quality hay, I think it eliminates a lot of the issues that you see, bloat uh, and all the other types of digestive 
system issues that you can see in a, in a variety of rabbits. Um, in terms of supplements, besides the hay, uh, I believe in feeding fresh vegetables. And typically my fresh vegetables consist of a, a nice, fresh quality, high grade kale, like you would buy at the grocery store, uh, small pieces of carrot, dandelion greens. You can find those, of course, in the summer in a lot of places. And if not, some grocery stores have dandelion greens, provides a lot of nutrients for the body. The rabbits actually like them. Um, if I was starting out, uh, to breed Belgian hares, and I had a choice of whether I started with the Rufus variety or one of the tan varieties, my recommendation would be with the Rufus variety. I think it's uh, a little bit easier in terms of, number one, getting quality animals. You typically see more high quality animals in the Rufus red. You also don't have to deal with the tan markings uh, on the tan variety. So if I was a, a young person starting out or even a uh, a new breeder of starting with this breed, I would suggest getting that. The main thing again is working with these animals, a proper bloodline. They'll want to stand up, they'll want to pose, they're gentle. I don't recommend doing this, this choke hold that you'll see some people do. I don't recommend pulling them up by their ears. I don't recommend this thing of stretching them out. You can see and, and the reason I say that is, is like anything, if you are going to have someone come up to you and put their hands around your neck, you're not going to react very well. And the same thing with these rabbits. When you do this, you notice how she fights and she struggles. You see that on the judging table with judges who don't know how to handle them. So I suggest simply lift up just like this, put your hand under there, get the feet positioned on the toes, give a nice rub over the back, make a few sounds and let the rabbit relax, stand up, and evaluate it. And again, it's about elegance, it's about length of limb. You can see when she stretches up there, very nice long front legs, short toes, long body, rounds well. Again, firm of flesh. You can see what happens when they molt. This is the new coat, this is the old coat. Uh, it's a great breed. Uh, I've enjoyed them, like I said. I began in 1982 with them. Um, I've had a number of champions over the years. I've judged them in Europe. I've imported rabbits from Europe. Um, and, and I think it's a great breed. So if you choose to uh, work with this breed, uh, I wish you much luck. And again, um, I would be glad to answer any questions, uh, help anyone. Feel free to reach out to me contact me and I'll be glad to uh, help you any way I can and, and best of luck. Thank you.